Have there been any moments when you're in office where you think we need to pinch each other because <clears throat> this is this is really special? I mean, I can think of I could go I could take up the whole your, all your time. I mean, getting to go to a state dinner at the White House mm -hmm. where the United States puts on its very best, you mm -hmm. know, which is kind of cool. Uh, getting to fly. Uh, to uh, Iraq and Afghanistan to see our soldiers over there. You know, you're just, there's such a sense of appreciation and insight. There's moments when you're standing on the tarmac as governor and Air Force One pulls up. I don't care if it's the president of your party or not. And the president comes down and then asks you to get in the limousine with him and ride. I mean, again, forget if it's your party or not. You're thinking these, these are special moments that mm -hmm. people don't get to do. But even more than those things, which are cool, there, there's times when you're somewhere like Chrissy was talking about, you you see some child whose life is different, or I, I was walking out of the airport the other day and a guy working at the airport grabbed me and goes, you know, my son's in college now. Uh, and he's, he's on the Tennessee Promise Scholarship and you go like, that, that's it, perfect. You meet a lot of important people, but it's so much fun to meet people that you maybe um, wouldn't have expected to meet or, or have people to the residents that maybe would never have gotten invited here. I know when he was in Afghanistan, we invited the spouses of our deployed military mm -hmm. to come to the residence. And um, I always said I had more fun because I, I got to meet the people behind the scenes who were helping them and, uh, and, and share this special place with them. And, what will you miss most? I, I mean, I, I'll, I'll miss this job. We, we have this incredible group of people that we work with, and uh, we all say that like this. Just for this moment of time, we got to be together and doing something that matters. So I, I'll, I'll miss that feeling of every day walking in and think, this matters. Um, and I think that's kind of part of what we all want to do as humans. We, we want to have something that has that kind of impact. So I'll miss that, and I'll also miss... Uh, not having to go through security at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> what do you look forward to most about getting back to Knoxville, though? Uh, I was going to say, yeah, I might miss having a chef. <laughs> <laughs> I might miss um, my staff who helped me do everything. So, um, looking forward to getting back to Knoxville, being with family, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, reengaging with our friends. And uh, Knoxville's got a lot going on, mm -hmm. and we we miss downtown Knoxville. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think anytime we come, we try to go down to Market Square and, and enjoy downtown. And I'm looking forward to spending some good time down there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. Go well, on. I was going to say, it's the same thing. And, you know, we, we lived in Knoxville most of our life. We raised our family there. We're looking for, I mean, it's, it's still home. And so it's, uh, you know, you, you can't make old friends. It's true. I mean, I, we go to church here. We love it. And we see people that we know. We go to church there and we know people's history. Like, I know that 25 years ago this happened in their life. And mm -hmm. it just, you can't really replace that. Well, uh, lastly, Governor, um, from my perspective, Robin made me ask this question. But, uh, we want to know if you still know how to drive. <laughs> the truth is, I, I, I've snuck out a couple of times. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. When we're in, when, when we've been home, like we'd we'd sneak out and go get ice cream, like a mm -hmm. couple of high school kids or something. Uh, but I haven't driven on the interstate because I didn't. The last year of the campaign, I didn't. So in about nine years, so oh, like, oh, yeah. January nineteenth yeah, like, that afternoon, mm -hmm. you know, you have trooper protection. They'll they'll take you. Out, in the inauguration, and then you're on your own. So that afternoon, when we're heading east on I-40, you might want to steer clear. I do want to just wrap up by just asking each of you this: Who has been your guidepost through mm -hmm. this journey? Um, each each of you. What has? Who has? You know, here's what I think about jobs like this: You need to have some. You have, you, need, you have to have a team around you, that's, and those, those folks are critical. But you better have somebody in your life that's not directly connected to your job who is there to help define reality. This is a job where you don't really get good feedback. Everybody either thinks, you're the greatest, you're the governor, wow, mm -hmm. or, they're, or they're mad at you. There, there's not really good, helpful, consistent feedback. And so you need some people who are going to be your their going to be your friends when you're not governor and they love you and care about you as a person and the fact that you're governor is a little bit irrelevant. You, you better have some people and I've been fortunate both in Knoxville and Nashville to have a group of guys that, that have played that role for me. Yeah, yeah I would say good friends. Uh, Bill has been so helpful to me in this because I, um, you know, I've, I've never been in this kind of position and, and so we've kind of, you know, gone through it together and, and I bounce a lot of things off of him. He gets tired at night, me asking him <laughs> questions. But, um, and, uh, and then, you know, I think my faith has held me strong. I mean, I've really had to lean on that because um, I've been in, in a lot of situations that I've never been in before. And so uh, uh, I've had to uh, step up to the plate when I wasn't sure, like, I don't know if I know what to say or do in this situation. But um, 
but I think my faith has really strengthened through that. And um, so that's been a good learning experience for me. And to, to buttress that, you felt like this is a calling. Hopefully, you know, we're, that's what you're going to feel like no matter what you're doing, whether you're being governor or, you know, teacher or whatever. Um, but I have, I mean, and that was, that's kind of a sense, there's, as much as I've loved this job, there's some really hard days too. There's some really, really hard days. And then you have to, you have to have that kind of conviction. I, this is right where I'm supposed to be. And being hard is not bad. You know, um, I, th I tend to think that our character gets formed a lot more in those hard times than necessarily in good times. Um, and so for, for me, it was that sense. I, I tell people all the time that, I, you know, at one point in life, I thought about going and being a pastor and this role has felt a lot more like that than I would, not in terms of, I'm, you know, it's my job to spread my f religion everywhere, but in the sense of it's, it's a great chance to serve. I mean, it, I can't tell you how many times I've thought, wow, we, c we can actually help that person with this disability or help this person with an education issue or this person with an opioid addiction, et cetera. I mean, it's a, it is an incredible chance to serve. And like I said, it just, it made it fun that we could do it together and it made it better because I can't tell you how many times Chrissy would say, you know, you're not, it's not exactly, you, you don't sound like you when you say that. You need to rethink that. Well, we thank you both. It, you're so generous with your time, and, and it has been an honor and a pleasure to, to spend time with you, but more importantly, to, to see this journey and, and, and from afar, yeah. and supported. <laughs> um, but thank you both no. very much. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank you. Fun to have you here.